October 19, 2017 meeting of the Monroe Planning and Zoning Commission. We're in town council chambers. It is now 7.01. Please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Will the commissioners please introduce themselves, starting on my right. Uh, Bruno Maini, alternate. Jonathan Ford McKella, alternate. Leanne Ambrosi, commissioner. David Townsend, vice chairman. William Porter, chairman. Michael Ryan, secretary. Will the rest of the planner. Scott Schatz, I am Lane, district director, town engineer. And Kathy Lynch, I'm alternate. Hey, Kathy. Rebecca Wood, supporting the Okay. Um, Commissioner Lisi is not going to be joining us tonight. Who are we seating in this place? Bruno. Bruno, you're seated. Okay, we have a request to amend our agenda to discuss some issues with 35 Corporate Drive. Uh, Chair, I'll entertain a motion. Motion amend agenda to uh, discuss 35 corporate drive site improvements. We have a second. second. We have a second. Any discussion? All the roll starting with Bruno. Laney, yes. Former Kelly, yes. No. Ambrosi, yes. Townsend, yes. Porter, yes. Ohio, yes. All right, that item will be added into under uh, deliberations and determinations, item number 10 modifications. Okay, moving on. Item number three, general public participation. Is there anyone who would like to address the commission on an issue that is not related to a public hearing? Seeing none, we'll move on. Item number four, general appointments. We have none. Public hearings. Instructions for public hearings. There are two sets of microphones for both public address and recording of the proceedings. Due to the need for recording, it is important to stand at the microphone and to speak at all times and to speak into it loudly and clearly in order that everyone in the room can hear and to capture what is being said. Individuals speaking from the seats will not be heard and will not be recognized to speak. Rules and procedures of a hearing. Points of order and responses will be entertained. Exhibits will be read for the record. Applicant and or representatives will present the application and will answer commission questions. The floor will be open to those in favor. The floor will be open to those opposed. The floor will be open to general comments or questions. The floor will be open to the applicant who may take the opportunity for closing remarks or rebuttal after which discussion will close. The applicant or his representatives are the final speakers. No comment shall be accepted from anyone unless recognized by the chair. All questions and comments shall be addressed to the chair who will determine if an answer shall be provided and by whom. There shall be absolutely no discussion between speakers and audience. The commission has no intention to limit the right of any person to speak, but ask that the speakers try not to be repetitive. Please try to present new information. If something has been said before, the commission would invite you to indicate your agreement with previous speakers. At no time shall, shall there be displays of emotion, such as applause, cheering, shouting, or similar noise. This is critical as this hearing is being recorded. If this happens, you will be cautioned. A vote or demonstration by a show of hands, standing by the audience for similar action will not be recognized. All parties are requested not to talk between themselves while the hearing is in progress. If you feel a need to talk, please step out into the lobby. All speakers, when recognized, must advance to the microphone to speak. Please state your name and address for the record. The chairman reserves the right to cut off discussion if it is not relevant to the application or is presented in an inappropriate manner. This is a legal proceeding, much the same as what would occur in a courtroom setting. We request that all parties observe the proper decorum that would be observed in that setting. Please turn off all cell phones or similar devices if you have a need to use these devices, please leave the room and use them outside. 
First is item number five, SEP 2017-10, file number 18938 Main Street. This has been postponed by request of the applicant to November 2nd, 2017. And item number six. <clears throat> Planning and Zoning Commission Monroe, Connecticut, notice of public hearing to be held on October 19th, 2017. In accordance with Connecticut General Statute 8-7D, a public hearing will be held in the Town Council, Town Hall Council Chambers, 7 Fan Hill Road, Monroe, Connecticut, on Thursday, October 19th, 2017, at 7 p.m. or soon thereafter, concerning the following. SEP 2017-11, file 1594A, 124 Enterprise Drive, Tax Assessor Map 94, Lot 17. Special exception permit application proposing an outdoor storage facility for zoning section 4.3.4, MJ Videra LLC owner applicant. Complete details and copies of all related materials associated with the above matters are on file and available for viewing in the Monroe Planning and Zoning Department offices. Well, do we have a list of sure. Exhibits. Exhibit number one, special exception permit application. Exhibit number two, project narrative. Exhibit three, notice to Commissioner of Public Health. Exhibit four, notice to Aquarium Water Company of Connecticut. Exhibit five, engineering report, Soli Engineering. Exhibit six, policy sheet set by Soli Engineering. Exhibit seven, engineer comments. Exhibit eight, building official comments. Exhibit nine, planner comments. Exhibit 10, response to review comments by the applicant. Exhibit 11, updated project narrative. Exhibit 12, response to staff comments by uh, applicant's attorney. Exhibit number 13, bond estimate form. Exhibit 14, letter from Bill Associates, Restoring the Wall and Slope. Exhibit 15, uh, revised plan set by Soli Engineering. Exhibit 16, notice to abutters with certified mail receipts for the public hearing notice. Exhibit 17, resubmission of SCP application with attachments for the commission. Exhibit 18, response to staff comments by applicant's attorney. Exhibit 19, response to review comments by Soli Engineering. Exhibit 20, um, updated plan set by Soli Engineering. Exhibit 21, updated engineering report by Soli Engineering. Exhibit 22, updated planner comments. <coughs> Exhibit 23, Inland Wetlands Commission notice certificate of decision. And Exhibit 24, updated town engineer comments with bond estimate. That is all. For the applicant. <clears throat> uh, good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen of the commission. For the record, my name is Kevin Soley. I'm a licensed professional engineer in the state of Connecticut with Soley Engineering. Office is located here at 501 Main Street in Monroe. Um, uh, with me here this evening is Jack Vadera, owner of uh, MJ Vadera LLC, the property owner, and uh, Vadera Paving. Also with us is Pat Sullivan, our attorney from Cohen and Wolf, who will be um, participating in the presentation a little bit later, talk some about some of the uh, uh, zoning concerns regarding this application. Um, uh, we're here tonight to talk about a proposed outdoor storage application for a property located at 124 Enterprise Drive. Uh, just to orient everyone, here is an aerial showing the town of Monroe. Uh, the pro subject property is located um, uh, just south of the town line with the town of Newtown. Um, Route 25 runs north-south uh, along the uh, western edge of town in this location here. Um, 124 Enterprise Drive is part of the Pepper Street Business Park. Pepper Street Business Park is accessed off of the north end of Pepper Street. Uh, as you know, Pepper Street has a loop um, which kind of runs uh, north-south uh, uh, in this general location here. Um, the northern entrance is uh, actually opposite uh, Commerce Drive. Um, and uh, Pepper Street um, uh, provides this access to Enterprise Drive. Um, the park has been developed over several phases since 2002. I believe this was uh, developed as part of uh, Section 2 of the business park. Uh, this area just provides a little bit more detail. You can see Route 25 north-south here, uh, Pepper Street in this location, and then uh, the intersection of Cambridge Drive uh, here, and then Enterprise continues to the north. So uh, the subject site is located um, uh, just south of the intersection of Enterprise Drive and Independence Drive. Uh, indestructible paint is in this location here. You can see wholesale here. Um, and then this, this lot is currently undeveloped, 124 Enterprise Drive. 
Um, the subject site is 3.2 acres. Uh, there are approximately 0.24 acres of wetlands on the property, and this application did recently receive uh, inland wetland approval for uh, the application that's currently before the commission. Um, this property was subject to um, previous approval in 2009 at that time, and there's uh, some substantial discussion in the town planner's comments regarding that application. It was approved for um, an industrial building and associated parking outdoor storage. Um, it did receive several variances as part of that application. I will note that we aren't uh, looking to utilize any of the variances associated with that previous approval, and um, the previous approval is um, somewhat independent of this application. Now this, uh, part of the uh, uh, impetus for this application is, is responding to some wetlands and zoning violations. There was a zoning citation hearing issued. Um, and as part of this is we're trying to develop a, a, an application that does comply with the zoning regulations to bring this into conformity. And um, which brings us here this evening. So in accordance with uh, zoning regulation section 4.3.4G, which allows for the um, outdoor storage of raw materials. Uh, that's what this application is for. Um, what we're proposing is um, to utilize the site for outdoor storage of materials. Um, the, uh, the site was, uh, is currently being used uh, in a similar manner. However, there are going to be some revisions or, or some modifications in terms of uh, uh, demonstrating compliance with the zoning regulations in accordance with our proposed application. The driveway is current as previously approved um, will remain in its current location. However, we'll be making some minor modifications to that to make sure that it complies with the uh, maximum uh, grades allowed in the zoning regulations. The driveway is proposed to be paved, which will provide uh, access to a permanent uh, anti-tracking pad. And in accordance with the zoning regulations under section 6.1.13 E3, we are requesting that the commission allow us to provide an alternative surface treatment for this lot. As I stated, what we're proposing is um, essentially a collection of bins for outdoor storage of materials. The material that would be stored is defined as clean fill in accordance with the DEEP regulations. Those materials would be um, uh, consistent with uh, gravel, crushed stone, um, reclaimed asphalt millings, um, uh, topsoil, uh, et cetera. The current application also proposes some uh, wood and stump storage in this location here, which we'll talk about in a little bit more detail. Um, the, the site topography is, is a little bit unique, as, well not unique, but um, Enterprise Drive is considerably higher and the site does drop down. It actually creates a natural screen and there's existing vegetation along the roadway which really kind of limits visibility into the site. And what we're proposing is to expand that existing vegetated buffer um, to comply with the required landscape setback requirements and to establish a set of bin storage in this location here. These bins will be set lower and um, uh, the rear of these bins will be a retaining wall which will be elevated um, kind of so, so it will be the existing graded enterprise drive sloping down to the top of these bins. We are proposing, as I stated, to utilize an alternative surface treatment in accordance with that section of the regulations. We would like to provide gravel because as the, as the use is storage of materials, um, essentially the operations are uh, during construction jobs or after construction jobs, jobs the contractor will bring material here to be uh, dumped and, and stockpiled and stored. Um, there will be a, a loader which essentially picks up and moves the material into the various bins and the mere operation of um, having, uh, you know, moving earth material such as this and the, the loader operation would really um, degrade pavement at a really rapid pace. So what we're proposing is, uh, is a gravel surface treatment which would be a little bit more durable, a um, little bit more easy, easily repaired as part of uh, ongoing site operations. Um, so we would propose, we're requesting the commission to approve that as part of this application. Um, in addition, there is a limited, uh, or excuse me, there is a uh, essentially a, a concrete um, block edge along the uh, easterly edge of the property through here and continues this way. Um, there's an existing uh, stone slope um, along this edge of the property as well, which makes up a great change between the uh, operation area of the property and a, a lower wetland edge along the property line in this location here. Um, there were some, our plan does include some extensive uh, landscape treatments in addition to uh, landscaping within the proposed detention basin. I'll touch on uh, grading and drainage operations in a moment. 
Um, now, we did receive, we did receive uh, revised comments from both the town planner and town engineer earlier this week. Rather than uh, inundate the commission with new fresh materials and additional paper, we know not to do that, but we will talk, we will um, specifically drill into each one of those comments uh, later on in the presentation. But part of that is, you know, there was some um, uh, interpretation regarding our proposed landscape plan, and I can just say that we're, the applicant's happy to provide additional plantings as necessary to make sure that there's absolutely no question that our plan does comply with the regulations in accordance with landscape uh, buffer requirements. From a grading and drainage standpoint, as I stated, the site does drop down from Enterprise Drive. Um, you can see here we're proposing a three to one slope to the back of the uh, proposed bin storage is here. And um, we are proposing a, a stormwater basin in this location. Our grading and drainage plan has been, in has been prepared in accordance with the 2004 water quality manual um, as provided by the Department of Energy and Environmental Protection, in addition to the Town of Monroe requirements. Um, there is a little bit of a unique uh, characteristic to this. As part of the previous site approval and site and really development of the overall park, there were a number of uh, properties which were designed to try to maximize the developable footprint and consolidate drainage operations. So this is one instance where uh, this application and the application to the south actually had a combined stormwater detention basin, which, was, which essentially straddled the property line and provided a, an opportunity for both 24 or 124 enterprise and the property to the south to drain into the same basin. While we didn't want to confuse this application and um, uh, commingle it with another property, we've redesigned this so that our detention basin has been, for, has been designed entirely within the limits of our property. Um, and it's been designed to provide sufficient uh, uh, capacity to accommodate the proposed uh, surface treatment as gravel. However, as part of the wetlands approval, we did oversize the design of that basin so that if this commission, for, for uh, whatever reason, elected to require that this operation have a paved surface, this has been designed to accommodate any increase in runoff which would be, um, could be anticipated between a gravel surface versus a paved asphalt surface. So this basin has been oversized to reflect that uh, requirement. Additionally, um, there are some comments from the town engineer, which we haven't had a chance to really review in much detail, but we did provide for some additional drainage flow from the property to the south. This is a little bit, um, as the commission may know, uh, throughout the duration of the history of the development of the park, a lot of easements and such were shown on maps. However, there were no deeds accompanying those, those easements, so there wasn't really defined or established rights associated with what a drainage easement means. You know, other than, other than it being shown on a map that um, this property had a drainage easement over, uh, or this property had a drainage easement over 124, and 124 had a drainage easement, drainage easement over this property, there were no prescriptive rights or defined rights associated with that. So, um, while there were some comments about regard, comments regarding modifying that easement to, to further give additional rights to the property owner of the south, I will say that there have been some conversations with that property owner, and again, since we designed our site to not be reliant upon the budding property, um, we believe we'd actually be able to provide some uh, supporting information from that property owner releasing those rights, not even requiring a drainage easement. So again, our, our basin has been oversized to accommodate some of this drainage from this property. However, there may not even be a, be a need for that. So we feel that what we've designed is, is um, uh, the site has been designed to provide positive flow to this basin. There's a catch basin in this location here and in the corner uh, of the operations area here. That water is then collected, treated through a hydrodynamic separator to make sure that it removes the um, minimum 80% total suspended solids as required by the deep water quality manual prior to discharge into this basin. We have a sediment four bay, which has been oversized from the, from the requirements, and then it would spill over into the detention basin itself, um, consistent with the previous approval and actually uh, far exceeds what it would pro what it, what's necessary from a water quality standpoint. And we've, we've built in those belt suspenders approach to this to make sure that we do not have any, um, uh, you know, we provide the necessary treatment for stormwater prior to leaving the site. Um, from a utility standpoint, we are not proposing a building as part of this operation as we believe it is not required under the regulations because in accordance with section 4.3.4G, we are proposing outdoor storage as our principal use, which, al which is allowed as a special exception use. Um, we are proposing uh, water service uh, from Enterprise Drive 
to a hose bib on the property so they can have that for uh, dust suppression and then water use on the property. We have done um, uh, testing with the Monroe Health Department um, for, to identify both the primary and reserve system for any future development. That's been identified and located here. And I will state that uh, the health department has provided comments which, which should be in your packet and has been for the record, which did verify that there is no uh, code that the health department is, uh, or the health department is aware of that requires the construction of permanent sanitary facilities and that the use of um, porta potties or temporary toilets, toilets is what we're proposing as part of this application, is allowed under the health code. Um, this is uh, essentially a seasonal operation. It's primarily used during the construction season, during the winter. It's, you know, the site kind of lays fallow um, while there isn't construction activity. So th that, is, that does support the, uh, the, the proposal in, in regards to permanent sanitary facilities. Um, Our soil erosion sediment control plan has been prepared in accordance with the 2002 soil erosion sediment control manual as provided by DEEP and uh, uh, it includes a series of uh, sill fence along the perimeter of the property and um, uh, you know swales to uh, towards the proposed catch basins uh, inlets in here until the, uh, the, the, the site is stabilized and finished and um, obviously identify the sediment trap which would be necessary. In addition to some silt fence and hay bales along this area here during any uh, period of site activity from a construction standpoint. Um, and again, our project has been approved by the Monroe and Llewellyn's Commission. That approval should be included in your files. Um, now I wanted to um, touch on some of the comments from town staff. We'll start with the town engineer's comments and we feel actually a lot of these are, are relatively straightforward and we can we can address them. Um, just to go through them, uh, uh, informative, Scott provides some information regarding the application and history of the property. Um, for general or technical um, A survey, the survey should include an original signature and certification. We can certainly provide that. Uh, B layout. The one proposed individual parking spaces should be indicated, including handicapped parking, dimensions, line striping, etc. Also, a protective landscape end island should be provided. Um, I'm realizing I skipped over our parking, so uh, I'm glad we went to that. And I'm going to come back to our site plan. Now, in the absence of um, a parking requirement for outdoor storage, we went, we went and looked in the regulations and tried to find the next best optimal solution to provide for our parking. And we've currently identified an area for 18 parking spaces utilizing the, the, the uh, parking requirement for a construction yard. That's kind of the most similar use we could find within the regulations. And under that, it requires um, one space per each facility vehicle and then um, a quarter of a space for each thousand square feet of yard area. So based on our calculations, we think that would be um, 18 parking spaces. However, as pointed out in um, uh, the, uh, Mr. Agresta's comments, um, since this use isn't specifically defined, it, it allows the commission the ability to kind of establish a parking requirement for the proposed use. Now, for outdoor storage, we talk about our operations in the narrative. And just to give you guys some additional information, essentially, as I stated before, during construction season, when um, uh, Madera Paving is, is working on a project, if they're, um, uh, you know, if they have um, recycled asphalt or, or something similar, they'll bring it onto the site, they'll stockpile it in a bin and um, move it around with a loader. So from an operation standpoint, there's really only a need for um, uh, a facility vehicle for a loader, a facility vehicle for a triaxle, and then possibly one vehicle for an operator to be on the property. Now from an operation standpoint, during construction season, there may be up to five trucks um, five trucks a day, however the trucks come in and out. So there isn't a need for sufficient or expansive parking on the property. Um, one, one item to note is that um, ideally the applicant would like to actually park fleet vehicles here because you may see Videra, uh paving trucks on the roads. They actually do a lot of work for the Monroe Public School System. In addition to all around town, you probably see a lot of their uh, Videra paving signs adjacent to you know freshly paved driveways. Um, they do a lot of business in the local community. The um, uh, Jack Videra is actually a Monroe resident. 
and he would like to actually park fleet vehicles on the property as well, which would be, which would be a benefit to the town of Monroe, as that those vehicles would then be registered in Monroe and have additional tax base. Currently, those vehicles are parked at their yard in Bridgeport. He would like to bring them to Monroe and park them here. However, um, as uh, Mr. Aggressive pointed out in his interpretation of the regulations, he doesn't believe that the, that the outdoor storage provision allows for those vehicles to be parked here. While we don't necessarily have that same interpretation, we would like to, the ability to park additional vehicles here, which we believe would be an increased uh, tax revenue to the town of Monroe. However, if um, the commission adopts the same interpretation that um, uh, the planner has proposed, then we would certainly understand and unfortunately that we feel that would be a loss for the town of Monroe in the sense of uh, lost tax revenue to have those vehicles registered and parked on the site. However, what we're showing is we've shown enough parking spaces for 18 vehicles. We had requested that these be um, gravel surface. Again, if the commission feels strongly about that and, and isn't willing to um, uh, grant that uh, alternative surface treatment, as your regs allows you to do. Um, we could pave these parking spaces and we could provide additional striping to satisfy both uh, the town planners and town engineers' comments. However, we didn't necessarily really feel it was necessary considering the use and operation of the property. Well, just a clarification, you're asking for a waiver, but in the wetlands required that they be paid. We don't have a copy of the annual wetlands. Yes, it's in exhibit number 23. Okay. I, I would just like to point out for number two, for your layout comment, what it actually reads is consider requiring that the entire yeah, yeah. site access and storage areas be paved in order right. to minimize the, sedimentation. The approval letter dated September 28th by the Inland Wildlands Commission, item 1C. The addition of notations indicating that all required parking and equipment and storage areas shall be paved. All right, Scott, we don't have a copy of that in our packet. No. No. Oh, well, I, I, you know, I submitted it in its exhibit, so I, I will go make that. Normally, no. It's okay. You should not. Do you have Scott's comments? Yes. Yes. Come on in. Yeah. We have Scott's comments, but we don't have anything related to anyone who wants approval. The uh, approval letter required paving of those areas, and it also, um, in the end of the letter, uh, recommended to the commission that you consider uh, paving additional portions of the, the lot of well. What they were concerned about was um, contamination not getting to the um, stormwater treatment facility. The, re the reason that they asked in you and, and providing recommendations because some of those areas extend beyond their upland review regulated area. So they're requiring paving of what? They required paving uh, of the parking spaces, all parking spaces, and all equipment storage areas. <clears throat> Are those shown on there? Yeah, we have an area through here that shows um, uh, parking spaces. Uh, we had also had shown an area kind of through here for equipment storage. However, additional uh, fleet vehicles can actually be accommodated in this location here, and the town planner had some concerns regarding circulation, so we actually removed that designation, and we can provide that additional uh, storage through here. Um, you know, obviously, I, I, we, in, in reviewing the comments, the, the, your initial interpretation are saying consider requiring, now noting that the, the actual condition is altering from that if the commission required it, we're happy to do it. We feel it's unnecessary. We feel it's going to be. Um, we, we can't waive a requirement from the nope. Illinois Wetlands. I understand. I just figured I'd state my case for the record. Okay. But we're happy to pave if that's what if that's the condition. Um, so we can certainly pave. However, in terms of parking requirements, as I stated from an operational standpoint, we don't believe that a full 18 space parking area is required for the operations. If the commission is happy to allow for the parking of additional fleet vehicles on the property, we'd be happy to make sure that it gets expanded to include those. Additionally, there has been a lot of uh, discussion regarding the requirements for ADA accessible parking spaces. We did provide some documentation from ADA in, that in terms of the proposed operation. We don't believe it's required to provide ADA accessible spaces because we do not have a proposed building. However, that um, remains to be something that is of critical importance of the commission. We're happy to provide a painted ADA accessible space for this lot, which will be used for storage. Um, 
we hope to be used for storage. Excuse me. Um, uh, continuing on with Scott's comments, number three, access to, to the detention basin should be provided via appropriate grading slope in addition to the provided gate in the fence. So we have an area here where we have a gate to access the detention basin. From that, we have a, um, I believe, a, a two to one slope. You know, any, any maintenance for this basin would be accommodated using a track mounted um, backhoe to remove sediment and et cetera. I've seen track mounted backhoes being able to navigate a two to one slope without issue. Um, have an issue with that. I, don't, I don't see a track machine effectively going in a two to one slope. And, and the two to one slope, which is your maximum slope, I mean, that's something you should be careful about in terms of uh, using for a detention basin, especially where they want to be accessing it. Um, it's just going to mess it up when you get in there. I was looking for something a little bit less steep on one portion of it. Yeah, I, mean, I was we, thinking like the westerly end would be the cheaper end where you could like flatten it out. Oh, from, from this area through here? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. We like can put, put the gate in the over there. We can certainly look to, to, to obviously, we, we do not expect that this hearing to be closed this evening. We expect to leave it open. So the big thing that we wanted to do is run through the comments, get the commission's feedback, and then we can incorporate any revisions into our revised submission before the next hearing. I mean, so we can my, certainly work with Yeah, my level of concern isn't as high as it would be for something like the town ends up taking over. You know, but, but I guess if you can address it early on and they don't have to deal with it in the future, you know, with it disrupting, mm -hmm. it would be a good thing to do. So we can certainly uh, uh, look to make a modification to, to address that comment. Number four, location and extent of equipment storage should be indicated. Measures to control and mark the limits of the parking space. Access aisle should be indicated. How to prevent equipment and storage from extending into the area needed for parking space access. Again, since we will be required to pave the uh, lot, we can certainly provide additional pavement markings to further delineate and to create those uh, separations. Um, you know, I just realized that you got the wrong comments. You got my previous comments. You're, you're reading from the, the 626.17, there's 825.17, revised comments that were provided. Well, the ones that you prov you just provided that had the bond agreement are the ones I'm reading from. Maybe I have uh... Now, Scott, oh, these are dated 10.13. Oh, wait a minute. I, so you're still, I'm not on the same one. <laughs> Yeah, no, these are 10, 13, 17. These are from this week. Okay, all right. I, I was looking at the wrong number. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, drainage and utilities. Um, C1, permanent sanitary facilities serviced by power, public water, and a septic system should be indicated since this is a permanent facility. Again, we have uh, designed this in accordance with the health department requirements, and the health department has provided um, uh, comments to the commission saying that permanent septic facilities are not required by the public health code. We're providing sanitary facilities through the use of temporary toilets as this is a seasonal operation. C2, uh, the layout discharge of the retaining wall under drain should be indicated. We did provide that detail, Scott. We, we have um, uh, an under drain along the base of the wall, an outlet in this way. We can certainly provide some additional detail for, for you for that. We can work with you on that to make sure you're satisfied with Yeah, I was, a little, I was also concerned about, isn't there a wall along the easterly edge as well? There is an existing um, stone uh, gravity wall, which was installed. Um, Isn't there a wall above that? I thought there was something. No, there's there's essentially um, we have you know mafia blocks stacked to create an edge to that uh, uh, an edge to that limit of the okay, operation. So your thinking is that unlike a typical gravity block wall, you're losing the uh, the pressure through the joints between the blocks. Correct between that, those, those boulders that were placed. Um, uh, D, sedimentation and erosion control. Uh, if the storage area ends up not being paved, some form of permanent anti-tracking measure should be provided. We're going to be paving the, the entire area. Um, details, uh, curbing should be provided and detailed. We can certainly provide curb detail now that we will be paving the, the property. Um, F, an approval should be contingent upon extending the drainage easement for the abutter, 90 to Enterprise Drive. Um, 
we, we feel that if we can secure a letter from the neighbor releasing those rights, we should be able to eliminate that drainage easement in its entirety. I, I assume that would be satisfactory to staff and the commission if we have a letter releasing those rights. I kind of backed off that issue anyway because it's, it's almost a who comes first deal. Um, I mean, the, the lots stood on the beginning. <coughs> Um, so, uh, in order to go through Will's comments, I would like to invite um, Pat Sullivan, um, our attorney from Cohen Wolf, up just to um, discuss some of the zoning related uh, matters uh, from a legal standpoint as we go through them. to address, um, there was some question as to whether or not the regulation that is um, on the books um, allows this particular use. So um, what the law says is that the same rules of construction apply that would apply to a statutory interpretation. Um, where there's two possible interpretations of an ordinance, the rational and reasonable interpretation is used. So basically, if you look at your regulation, it says by special permit in the zone, you allow outdoor storage. And if you read G, outdoor storage of raw materials, work in progress, finished products, machinery, waste materials, or other equipment or materials, including trucks used on the premises, such storage is subject to the specific standards contained in Article 8 um, of these regulations, and that's just your special permit standards, and must be in an area completely screened from the road in adjacent lots or zones, except for access driveways by shrubs and or trees so that within five years there will exist a 12 foot high uh, foliage screen. So it's clear, it's straightforward, um, it's unambiguous, um, doesn't require a building, doesn't require anything else, and it's a special permit use which means you can look at it um, separately. When was that a question? You started your comments that that was a question. My understanding was that there was some question as to whether or not the regulation would, would apply, and I just wanted to make sure that the commission understood that. I don't that. think there was a question whether the regulation applied, whether you apply with the uh, use. Well, the proposal is for outdoor storage. The company that's proposing it is a construction company. And um, so if, there, if there's no question that this regulation applies, then, then um, you know, my comments can be shorter. Well, the point that I was trying to make is you started off your sentence saying that there was a question raised about whether this use was a, the use that's set forth in the code was applicable. There's no comment in anybody's comments that I'm aware of. It's the question whether that use was a permitted use in the district. I think there's some, there's some comments in, in your letter, Will, regarding the ability for outdoor storage to be a permitted use and the fact that you are, you are making some assertions that a building is required. I don't think I said that. In any regard, that they use some of the special acceptance standards for outdoor storage required a building. What I said is there are functions that you may be proposing or other functions that under the code would require a building that go beyond the outdoor storage use. The outdoor storage use allowed outdoor storage, mm -hmm. period. There are other business functions that could occur in a business which would require a building if you were to do those things. There are no other and there business. There also were common questions about the relatively of the, of the vehicles that you had raised already. Um, it's for the storage of vehicles on site. It's not for the coming and going of vehicles on the construction business. So again, it's not whether the use is allowed, it's whether what you're proposing fits within the parameters of the use. If you fit in the parameters, you're allowed. Well, then I just will say to the commission that I think we are, the proposal that we're making fits within the confines of the regulation, and if there's no issue with that with regard to staff, then, then um, that's fine. Well, I, I didn't say I agree that what you're proposing fits into it. I'm just saying there's no question whether that is a committee use. Well, what I would like to do is get on the record whatever, if you have some issues with regard to whether the regulation applies or whether what we're doing is 
found within the regulation, then that's I'd like to address that with the commission before we get done with the hearing. You know, whether it's tonight Correct. or next time. That, that is what time. my comments were. They raise the issues that are in contradiction to, in my opinion, what you're proposing versus what the use allows. So my comments are, are to that point. Can you can you would would it be um, would you be able to elaborate on the specific aspects of our application which do not comply with that permitted use? I believe my amendment speaks to that. And, and okay. Maybe what we can do is go by. Can we comment can we by go, comment? I think can it's we a great go idea. Comment by comment, sure. and then um, if I need to get back up, I will. No, I think you should stay. I'll stay here. I think it'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, uh, Will's first comment, um, number one, regards permanent history and current site use considerations. It talks about what was previously approved and how the property has been used um, uh, over the recent uh, past and, and, and is currently being used. Now, what we're doing is we propose an application which has been designed to comply with the regulations. So any past permit approval goes out the window. We're addressing the concerns regarding the operations as part of this application. So any processing that took place on the property before is not proposed, will not take place. We are proposing the outdoor storage of materials only in accordance with section 4.3.4G of the regulations. Um, number two, a construction yard use was not previously approved by variance or otherwise. It then continues to go on and elaborate regarding construction yards and construction companies. Um, we are not um, we are not referencing the past approval. We are not using the variances associated with the past approval. We are simply proposing for an outdoor storage use as defined in section 4.3.4G. Um, you know, there's uh, a lot of um, pontificating and discussion regarding a construction company and a general contractor and a paving contractor. It would be my opinion as a, an engineer, not an attorney, that the commission should not um, take the, I, I wouldn't, I'd, I'd hate to see the commission take the approach that you want to get into defining with specificity the different types of contractors or, or construction yards or, or contractors in an application. Again, our application has nothing to do with a construction company. It has nothing to do with a construction yard. It has nothing to do with a paving contractor versus a general contractor. Our proposed use is simply outdoor storage. But uh, as an aside from that, you know, trying to define different types of construction companies, if the commission were to um, look at, you know, addressing this type of use in the overall regulations, I don't, I don't know if I'd recommend trying to be that specific in defining the various subcategories that would go into that. Um, but again, we're not proposing a construction company, we're not proposing a paving contract, we're not proposing any of those things, we're simply proposing the outdoor storage of materials. Um, item three, a landscape buffer with a depth equal to the front yard setback is required. Um, uh, it requires, uh, you know, um, uh, alternative components, how they, how they would achieve the suitable alternative buffer. There's some comments regarding our proposed planting species. Um, again, we, I've shown here how we can add additional plants. We can further add plants to make sure there's absolutely zero question that our plan will comply with the regulations. Um, uh, number four, the current proposed site uses for the following industrial district two special exception permit. Again, outdoor storage, 4.3.4 G. A, the above proposed principal use did, did not exist under the zoning regulations at the time of any previous ZBA, Inland Wetlands SEP, SEC, SEP site plan approval. We don't believe that's relevant because we're not referencing the past approval. We're coming in for a new application for outdoor storage. Um, item uh, 4B, the proposed use is limited to storage only. It does not permit any processing, et cetera. Again, um, we are only proposing the outdoor storage of materials, and we will only propose and we will revise our application materials so that there is no question we are not proposing to keep any um, other trucks that are used off-site, which is contradiction to the specific site use limitation, so we can modify this. We would only need to leave a loader on-site and possibly one triaxle to move material on-site. However, um, we can further refine that and provide that information for the commission. Um, and, and obviously, Pat, please feel free to jump up because in a lot of these comments there are specific um, 
assertions regarding your memo and what you were saying in those memos. Okay, but actually 4B is an important one because uh, as it continues, Will states further, as set forth in zoning 4.3.9A1, all business, servicing, or processing shall be conducted within completely enclosed buildings. No building is proposed because none other no other business activities are proposed to be um, uh, operated out of this site. Again, we're only proposing for simply outdoor storage. Um, so any of those other functions that uh, would be, you know, looked at, I don't know, payroll, processing, um, any of those other items, they, they would not take place here. Okay, you got to remember the context of these comments are coming from your application materials. Mm -hmm. Some of your application materials assert things that you're not, that you're not quite saying tonight. And you're clarifying tonight that you are just doing the outdoor store. Right. Um, C, uh, portable temporary use toilets are not acceptable for a permanent principal use. A permanent building and related septic disposal facilities would need to be provided. Um, again, the health department comments, which are um, should be before you in your package, clearly state that there is not a requirement for permanent sanitary facilities for this type of use. We were not able to find anywhere else in state statute or the zoning regulations that require a building associated with this specific operation. Um, and if staff was able to find something, we'd certainly be um, there actually is another provision in the zoning regulations, which um, I was apprised of today. Section 8.2.2E. <coughs> General standards of special exception permits. General standards special sanitary permit are as follows. That safe sanitary sewage disposal will be provided by means of a public sewer line. Obviously, we don't have that here. A treatment plant or a subsurface sewage disposal authority. I would just say that the health department has issued a comment letter and said that what we're proposing yeah, is a, I, I agree. Approval. The health department is saying you don't, but the zoning regulations are saying you do. The zoning regulations say it has to be approved by the local the authority. The system has to be approved. You have to put in a system that is approved by the local authorities. That's what the regulation says. But I think the jurisdiction for, for, the, for the health code and for is the health department. It's not the planning and zoning. This is, this is not necessarily strictly a health department issue. This is a zoning issue. The zoning, the zoning regulations do not want porta potties for a permanent this facility. Isn't a, this isn't a permanent facility. This seasonal. is a temporary seasonal facility. To okay. that issue as well, you have not put any limitations on your action as being seasonal or limited in duration. So. You could actually operate 24-7 almost. In fact, you could sell this and someone could take the permit on and be different than what you, your needs are and use it more. There's no limitation stated in your application to make it seasonal or less than full time. But I, I, I believe that 8.2.2E is, is pretty, 8.2.2E is uh, pretty clear that the zoning regulations require either connection to a sewer, a treatment plant, or subsurface sewage disposal system. I mean, I think I would read the regulation to say subject to approval by state and or local authorities. Um, you know, the argument can be made that, that it's, it's the approval of state and local authorities that's required. They have to approve the system that's being put in. That's being proposed. The first part of the sentence says, shall be provided. So. Which continues well, to no, subject no, no, no. to. I, I know. I mean, but safe the sanitary is, shall be provided. That's what the, the, the shall be so provided for. That's sewers. the basis of the <laughs> or treatment plant sewer line or subsurface sewer. Or sub -sewer. Well, I think and the means of those would get approved, but the, the operative word in the sentence is will. safe sanitary sewer will be provided. Right, safe sanitary sewage disposal will be provided. It didn't That's say it will be provided of. unless the health department or the state don't. Require. No, but 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 if a porta potty can be a safe sanitary sewage disposal. It can. It just doesn't and has right. been it indicated by the health department. It just doesn't meet one it of those meet things. The, it doesn't meet what the regulation is calling for. We can certainly look at that. <clears throat> 
Okay. Um, uh, D, under Will's comments, 4D, all proposed outdoor storage is required uh, to be completely screened from all surrounding properties. Um, the proposed uh, planting plan is minimally changed. Again, we're willing to provide a re further revised landscape plan to uh, sufficiently comply with those requirements. Kevin, the, in doing that, can you also be clear as to um, the part where you need to do the, uh, the alternate plan for the portion of the septic area that you're protecting? We actually don't because, uh, again, we'll look into that requirement a little bit further. No, if you clear it at some future date, you don't have to do it, and you don't build it for whatever reason that pans out that way. But someday you might have to clear it. Obviously, the buffer is not there. But we wouldn't. But in order to do that, we would be required to become to come before this commission know, because we would have be room to be able to do it. So don't close out that door. We're but but again, our current application we can provide that we can actually plant over the septic areas because there are we can have. We can preserve the septic suitability of those soils and still plant above those areas so that we can comply with the letter of the regulation as part of this application. If we were in the future to come in and construct a septic system there, we would be obligated to come back before this commission because that would include a septic system, that would include disturbance, that would include a building, right, to actually access and uh, discharge into that system so that we feel that any future activity related with that will have to be approved by the commission regardless. So at that time, that it would be the appropriate that, that time is, to pursue that request. That is request. true, but isn't the appropriate time because you're actually asking for that at this point in time by having that be the only area for the subject and therefore developing around any other areas which could close out the possibility for that to happen, but you're asking for it now. But uh, again, we can plant in that area now preserve the septic suitability of those soils, comply with the regulations, and not have to request an alternative treatment. I, I, I they again, push that off to the future? Correct. I don't. It would have to be dealt with at that time because at that time we would have to provide an alternative treatment. I think you have to provide the alternative in the future, but I think you have to plan for it now because your plan is setting in motion I think, that situation. I, I, think that's, I think that's a little bit difficult to do because think about what that would think about how you that we would then be required to, to incorporate every possible plan change as part of every application no, for what you're, future you're set, things could happen forth on your plan the location for the septic system within the landscape buffer area. you're asking your plan to be approved with that location now but we're providing we can provide landscaping in that area to satisfy the requirements of the regulation as it pertains to this application uh, we can argue about that no, we're, 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 not, we're not looking to argue. We're looking to discuss, get feedback from the commission, obviously feedback from staff. We feel that we can plant in that area, maintain and preserve the septic suitability of those soils, and comply with the regulation and not need that alternative buffer plan approved by and, the commission. And, and possibly under that plan, it would be impossible for someone to provide an alternative down the road. But, but the requirement for the landscaping <clears throat> is connected to the outdoor storage. So if the land were used differently No, it's in the not. Future, the landscape buffer is required for all applications. The 50-foot? Yes, The 50-foot landscape is. buffer is required for all sites. But, but again, any time we would look to modify that treatment, we would have to come before this commission, and this commission would have the ability to approve again, or deny that application. Again, my main point is not to close the door on that, as you are asking for the plan at this time. So we can talk about it more often. Bless you. Okay. Um, the storage area proposed just beyond the site entrance driveway access is not screened. The proposed area for wood stump storage is clearly visible from the street and this does not comply. Um, you know, we feel that there is such a limited um, opportunity for visibility for this site. If you were to drive by there now without the extensive plantings that we're proposing, I think you'd have a hard time seeing even that wood storage unless you're essentially right in front of the driveway, right here, looking directly in this location. However, if the commission feels strongly that we have not suitably screened that location, we're happy to eliminate that component of the application. Um, the area labeled for septic reserve is presently wooded and proposed to be further landscaped. Um, we just talked about that. Um, perimeter vegetation along the side and rear yards of the property are not articulated by a tree survey. Um, you know, we can certainly provide additional pictures in terms of how that's screened. There's, you can see on the aerial. Um, you know, there's extensive woods through here. Um, 
you know, there, there's already, uh, we believe, plants established, but we can certainly provide okay. whatever is necessary. On this, on this picture here, where, you, where are they putting the stumps and stuff? They're right here. So you have to be in front of the driveway to see it. You, you, yeah, you'd have to be you'd have to be looking down the driveway in order to see it. Okay, thank you. Uh, number five, other applicable town permits needed to implement the proposal include um, a wetlands approval. It was issued on September uh, September twenty seventh. A highway work permit for the uh, Department of Public Works for the driveway. We will certainly secure that permit as part of construction. Administrative health, fire, and zoning building permits are also required. Again, we we believe we provided. Um, through the health department comments, sufficient uh, cover for that, but we will look into that further. Um, number six, the project narrative lacks sub substantive evaluation or reasons for consistency with the POCD, given the number of zoning non-compliance issues as discussed above. Again, we believe we have a difference of interpretation and we believe our plan does comply with the regulations. Um, number eight, with regard to the project narrative relative to the SCP general standards of 8.2.2, Subsection B, nearly all properties and uses generate tax revenue, thus this is not a sufficient reason demonstrating consistency with the POCD, nor has the anticipated net increased tax revenue been detailed to understand its potential magnitude in contrast to the benefits claimed. We can certainly elaborate that upon that to uh, ensure that there's no question there. Subsection that, C. That would include your fleet vehicles? Or not? Well, we're clearly in accordance with these regulations. We cannot park. Benefit would not at this moment include those fleet vehicles. It, it can't based on the interpretation. I want to make sure I understood that. Yep. Subsection C, okay. landscape and buffer compliance issues remain as discussed above. We feel we can provide a revised plan which complies with those. Um, number nine, parking. Construction yard is not a permitted use proposed under SEP. As such, we can determine the parking requirements with the commission. Again, in discussing the operation, we feel that no more than three parking spaces is really necessary for this. Um, and uh, I believe we've, pri we've, we've provided some sufficient discussion regarding the operations to substantiate that, um, but we're very anxious and curious to hear what the commission's thoughts are regarding that, uh, that, that point. 9B, um, the proposed parking areas of the site are required to be paved. We are gonna propose to pave the, the parking requirements or the parking area and the entire site. Section 6.1.13b, spaces and dimensions not detailed. We will provide those details. Clear access aisle not delineated or dimensioned. We can provide that additional information. Surface treatment non-compliant. We will comply with the surface treatment requirements. Parking conflicts with turning movements. Again, the through the paving, we can add sufficient detail to demonstrate that's not an issue. No space striping or marking proposed or detailed. We can provide, we can comply with that as well. Provisions for compliant handicap accessible parking per zoning 6.1.6 has not been demonstrated. Again, we will provide a handicap striped parking space in this lot to comply with that uh, portion of the regulations. D, sufficient on-site truck turning movements, including for emergency vehicles not demonstrated. Figure eight demonstrates the truck turning conflicts with the off-street parking areas in several locations. We can further refine that to ensure that we can comply with those requirements. Uh, number 10, Plan labels the central portion of the site as storage of materials and equipment, but the area and content of storage materials and equipment is undefined. We have removed that component because there was some question, question regarding the maneuverability <coughs> of the site. Um, uh, storage of materials will not occur between the parking area and the storage bins. Again, the bins themselves are really what we're looking to establish for the storage of materials along this edge here, and there's uh, more than sufficient space between that edge and the parking area to have uh, adequate circulation. Uh, number 11. Uh, Kevin, on that point, what I was making is that you had said something in your comment responses about how that area was really the access aisle, which I understand. I just I would like the plan to reflect that in more articulate notes and stuff. Sure. We can do that. Um, number 11, some of the proposed storage bins are not labeled to their intended content. Further height of stored materials not indicated. Um, plans do not reflect, note, or detail that which is indicated in the response comments in regard to height. We can provide some additional information, but essentially because this is so low, and the topography of the site and the grading through here, we can provide limitations in terms of how high these piles will be so that there is not any uh, 
visible piles to the road itself. We can provide that additional information. Um, uh, response to comments, page eight indicates multiple locations and materials to be processed. Again, there's no processing on the site. That was clearly a Scribner's error and that will be removed from our project narrative. Um, and the response to comments, um, the bin labeled topsoil storage coincides with the proposed catch basin with no controls to prevent sediment running. So we did have topsoil stored here. We can certainly um, provide some additional uh, demarcation for that pile or even possibly relocate that to another location on the site to ensure that there is proper protection. But again, we will be paving the entire site so we can do that through maybe curb or, or some other aspect. We will put some more thought into that and have uh, something revised for you to consider. And then the area labeled wood stump storage is not well contained nor fully screened from the street as commented above. Again, we're happy to um, uh, modify that those limits to ensure that uh, there are no questions regarding the ability to screen that area. And again, a couple more, couple more trees along the driveway should screen that adequately from the road. I, I mean, I, we agree because again, the only time you can really see it is if you look directly down the driveway. If you're pulling into the site, it's the only time you can see it. Um, site plan considerations, um, easement information. Again, there actually is no volume and page associated with those easements. They were just shown on a map, and that's it. There's no other um, rights established, so we were uh, we can uh, uh, address our comments. Um, all areas proposed is gravel for the for the for the surface treatment. Again, where we can pave the entire site, and then E. The edge of the septic system is extremely close to the driveway and should include greater separation. Um, me, Mr. Sully, you said you're paving the entire site? Yeah, I believe that was the requirement. Well, well actually, I, I will say this. So, just to show... Didn't the wetlands say you were just paving the parking spaces? Mm -hmm. Well, they, they well, actually, so, so this is the limit of the upland review area through here, right? So, the bins themselves are actually outside the upland review area. So, I guess that was part of the clarification that Scott provided. The wetlands commission is requiring us to pave the parking area and essentially everything within their limits. And I think no, they're asking. No, it didn't say that. It was the requirement is to pave the parking spaces and the equipment storage areas. Everything else is up to whatever PMZ decides. But that central but area they also is had a designated equipment storage. Correct. So Basically, up to the bins. Up to the bins. Yeah. I think that's what we what we prefer to do is is we prefer to pave through here and then leave these as gravel because it is going to be, um, you know, inert construction materials. So we prefer not to have to pave Unless the bins themselves. Tailings. Millings. Millings. Millings are defined as uh, clean fill by the DEEP in accordance with their regulations. Well, I believe you gave us studies showing that. Milling storage can reach lead. I I, I, I did not not. give you I did not <laughs> provide what, what what we provided what we provided was was a plethora of studies that said that 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 does not prevent an impact from a um, environmental standpoint and the DEP's own definition of clean fill actually reinforce, reinforces that. There's obviously been a lot of uh, yeah, discussion. DEP says you can use it as clean fill provided it's capped. It also says that it, it is it does meet their definition of clean fill, though, and that's what would be, be oh, provided it's cap. You did see studies showing that storage can reach lead. I mean, if you if you can propose to pave the whole site, that would take care of that. Include paving underneath any bins that would store lead. I mean, this was a discussion with the commission that when they just passed the regulation, and you did require that of the. Could you pave where the millings are? Pave the milling bin. Yeah, we can do that. If you want to leave everything gravel and you just pave where the millings go, and it connects into your. Would that solve the problem? Well, you guys do realize that there's, and there's correct me if I'm wrong, but the stormwater quality unit that's going to go in doesn't treat lead that I know of. Maybe it does. I, I don't think that there's... Because it's... The, 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 the millings yeah, that are yeah. in the bin, obviously, are going to leach. When the rain, they're going to go through those millings. They'll go through them, I, end up on the pavement, 
below them, if, if, flow into the uh, stormwater system that it goes through the stormwater quality. If I, treat hydrocarbons. Though. It does treat hydrocarbons, yes. If it I do, does, if, it treats hydrocarbons, yes. But if I remember correctly, and there were a lot of studies that we looked at regarding millings, I, I believe the only instance where there was lead observed was from studies in Florida, and it was because highways were paved in like the 50s. I don't believe they put lead in current asphalt mixes. I, I, it was in the gasoline. That's how the lead got It's in the there. gasoline where they, that they drips rip onto the pavement. Right. Yeah. Cars drive on the road. Yes. They fill up the road, and now it's in the road. New buildings don't have it. If it's a new road, then it gets milled. It isn't in there. It's the old roads that get milled because when you have. And then that's why you get something to do with the temperature in Florida. No, the, the, Weather here, right? Clear. I mean, there are a lot of there are a lot of variables. I, I'd have to. I mean, we we looked What's at so many studies. I, I don't remember. I'd have to go back. And, and again, I'm I'm just speaking from saying that for the record, this is my recollection. But I don't have the studies in front of me, nor have I read them in the past two years. I believe it was not notwithstanding. Not the so. commission is going to have to deliberate on that issue and, and to grant the modification. There are it's limited to a certain reason. So you have to stay within the confines of the reasons of where you allow yourself to have the modified surface treatment. I mean, you know, from a practical standpoint, whether the milling pile is paved or not, from a leaching standpoint, it's still going to go to the same place. I think it's sufficient for the time being to say that you're, you're intending to pave everything except the storage bins. And then we will have to waive the surface treatment for the storage bin areas. Does that sound right? Yes. Okay. Um, so I think with that, th that's the last uh, one of Will's comments. So I think now we'd, we'd certainly like to hear any questions the commission may have and obviously open up to the public. Before you do that, Kevin, is, can you go, do we show this up again? You don't have a drawing? It's here. Now, uh, oh, the, You're the, right the, on that driveway. Yeah, the, the, comment, the comment regarding the, the driveway. So, so again, the septic system and the health code requires, in terms of placement of, the, of those septic systems, um, it, septic systems can exist below pavement and below driveways. Sure. Sure. Built a certain way. Right. Kevin, do you also need a reserve? Yes, and we. Septic system two, so you, in addition to one, you need a reserve place for the other, right? We, we have, and this actually shows both the primary and a reserve area. Okay. So did it, was, do you know if in the original approval, if it was ever tested. In the original approval, or is it shorter? Or the, you, oh, your driveway neck different. The original approval had a septic system in this location. Not a driveway here. is different. Didn't come in as close. More perpendicular. <coughs> yeah, yours bends in. No, they they can be right up to the driveway. Yeah, no, I know. Yeah, we can be under the driveway, right? But your driveway is a little different. Right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Questions. Ready, ready for questions? As will will ever be. <laughs> Bruno, you're up. Thank you, Bill. Uh, not too many questions. Um, On-site work trailer. Is there going to be one? No, not proposed. None whatsoever. Okay. Um, what are you doing for lighting? I'm assuming there's going to be a point where a truck's going to have to get in there dark after hours at some point. What are you doing for lighting? We aren't proposing any site lighting as part of this. Uh, None whatsoever? Activity. Nope. You don't think you need any? No. Um, from an operation standpoint, uh, we don't believe it. The, the, the loader has lights on it. The vehicles have lights on it, sufficient light to operate those machines. Um, and it's not, in, it's not the intent to create an area that we're lighting up, drawing attention to. This is really just, again, for the storage of materials. Um, will outside companies be coming in to 
to purchase material. No, this isn't a yard where material is sold. It's only used. In, it's only used by the. So they're taking their own material, putting it on here, and they're going to reuse their material, whatever, in, on their own jobs. That's correct. So there's going to be no other vehicles from a different company coming in to, to buy materials of any sort. No, there's no transactions of any kind at this, you know, between any other parties. Um, what about? I'm assuming they're going to have a full-time employee on site. No, it's not necessary. Um, essentially what happens is, you know, when, when they have a job and they bring material in, they'll dump it, that operator can actually get out, use the loader, move the material. Um, if there may be an instance where they have a number of jobs bringing materials in, they may have someone on site for that day, specific for that operation, to actually move the materials, but there is not a need for anyone to be here for any extended duration. The bins, how, 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 are, you, how are you separating material from with the bins? Um, we have proposed um, essentially, uh, you know, uh, concrete um, blocks, um, <coughs> freestanding blocks, two by two by six for, for kind of walls to establish limits and edges for the various materials that would be stored there. Um, I actually agree with you with the stumps and all that kind of stuff. If you're if you're not basically in front of that driveway, I don't see how you're going to notice any of that kind of stuff. Um, I guess if the commission wants to add a tree or two there just to make it, I don't know. I'm good for the way as it stands, as is. Um, the landscaping, I think, is going to be, is going to create a great buffer from, from witnessing what's going on down there. Um, any kind of forklifts or anything going to be on site where you have to store propane tanks or any of that kind of stuff? Or no, only no? loaders. Only loaders. Um, and I guess we went over the paving. Kevin, I'm all set, buddy. Good job. Thank you, Commissioner. Jonathan? I just had a question. Uh, I have a couple questions. But for uh, the storage of the wood in the, the back mm -hmm. over the end, there's no proposal to contained in any way will just be piled or what's, so, the, what's the intent for that? So um, uh, it, the intent is just to have it piled. Okay. Now um, there is, we do have some limits along the edge where we've kind of extended that um, concrete block to demarcate the, the uh, easterly edge of that, but we did not uh, have it further continuing this way because um, essentially the, the area gets contained based on the materials that, 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 that exist there and there's more than sufficient room to provide that. You know, I think what we can do is, since we will be paving this area, we can provide some additional pavement markings to further delineate the limits of that uh, storage. Okay. I, I, my main concern is when you're having the vehicles come in and out, and it's not separated by anything that you know something rolls into it, and uh, you know, I, it's just some safety concern Good job. since it's over there. But um, I. I, I, my preference would be to comply with any potential ADA problems and have a strike space as well as um, that, that was pretty much it, though. Yep. Uh, I just have a couple of, um, a couple of questions. Uh, I'm also concerned with what Michael brought up about the fact that uh, materials could be leaching. You did mention some of the materials. Could you delineate again what these would be? You said gravel. Yep. And uh, sand? Gra I mean, what, what, what else are we looking at? So, so you would have, um, and you know, we, we, we do have, we would have uh, gravel storage, we'd have reclaimed asphalt storage, um, gravel, um, uh, processed stone, and. Um, of different sizes? Uh, yeah, different. Well, processed stone, it actually has. Um, larger stone fragments, it could be up to three inch minus, but then also has fines in it as well as used for structural fill or road base. One bin larger, one bin smaller? Um, it would actually probably, there, there could be some processed stone, which is a combination of, of fines and stone. There could be um, three quarter stone. There could be various sizes of stone that they would have from coming from jobs or needing for jobs. Um, and also um, uh, general fill, common fill. So anything, you know, essentially, um, you know, any any other material that would come out through an ex excavation, you know, when you when you when you're doing a construction project, you excavate off the topsoil. That next section of material, if you you know anything that would be above rock, is typically called common fill. 
um, in Monroe, it's glacial till. Um, but yeah, there could possibly be common fill stored. But anything that would be stored would meet the definition of clean fill as defined by the DEEP. And as part of our next submission, we're actually gonna add some additional notes to the plans to further um, clarify that and provide those references to the DEP regulations which define what clean fill is. Okay. So this is all going to be used at, at various sites in basically excavating the land, getting it ready. It, it is, but however, this is, again, this is, the, the, the operator here is a, is a paving contractor, so it's really limited to paving driveways. It's not a general site contractor who may have a lot, a need for a much more broad, um, diverse range of materials, whether they're doing drainage installations, things like that. This is more, you know, what would what you'd encounter doing road construction, parking lot construction, things like that. Um, I'm sorry, I did not have a chance to drive by this site. What is there now? Other than, I mean, there's, there's, there's nothing left at all. There's no, nothing left over from a previous use? No, this has been the only use. And essentially, the, in, um, in Will's, in Will's comments, yeah. Yeah, I've, I've got it, but you know, it's, it shows some vehicles, basically, and uh, some stone, you know, some what look like older rocks. I, I'm just wondering. Yeah, I know the picture is dark, heavy, but if you look at the upper picture, if you look at the upper picture, and you look to the right, okay. that is that's, stock where that's stockpiled materials. That darkness. Is, I don't know what material it is, but it's a material that's stocked out. You can see in the upper regions of that aer aerial photograph. And that will continue to, to remain, you know, to be better contained. Yes, yeah. better defined okay. and contained and, and uh, managed. Okay. Um, the stumps, do they stay there forever? What, what's the purpose? I mean, now they, they've been brought to this site for some reason. They can be pretty unsightly. They can be pretty big. Are you waiting for them to just rot? Just no, cut, no, cut it's, it's, them take them away? it's more of, it's more of a staging or a storage area, right? So if they have a job or they have to remove some, some, some stumps or something, it would come here for, for a duration of time and then it would, it would be removed off site. Um, you know, again, it would just be storage here for a temporary duration. Um, it's not that we were, we were creating a stump bin and letting them okay. compose so or decompose they're, or anything they're like that. On their way to someplace else. Correct. Okay. Um, how about vehicle repairs? Vehicles going to stay there overnight, or vehicles going to stay there during the winter? Uh, no. Uh, maybe just the loader. The loader. I assume they can use it, right? Yeah. I know, but he also said that the vehicles have a yard at Bridgeport. Right. Well, well I, I got to assume you're going to have a vehicle that's going to work that work the bins. And no, I mean, once the, the season's kind of done, are the vehicles going to be removed? I guess that's the best way to ask, it, to ask that question. Or are they going to stay? Yeah, there? yeah, uh, potentially. Yeah, during like during the, the winter months when there's no activity, um, it may stay there or it may be removed. We can provide more clarity on that. Okay, just just a question. I don't necessarily have an opinion on that. Either. Um, we discussed this at another time. Will there be a sign in front of the property? Or another property is <laughs> we, we, we aren't currently proposing a sign. In the case of trespassers, in, in case of emergency, in case there should be a sign, a way to contact somebody. Just we can, in case. We can certainly incorporate something. Okay, I think that that's, I think that's important. And I think that's it for now. Thank you. Oh yeah. The, set, the section that you put <clears throat> for the outside storage of raw material, you know, section G. Mm -hmm. I don't believe that relates to removing and bringing the material into the site, does it? This section here? Well, well, that section, it, it establishes the use as outdoor right. storage of materials is that's permitted. On the, that's on the site, but it doesn't say anything about what you bring in and out of the site. Um, I think that would be under, like, a construction yard or something like that, but doesn't it? It just states what you can do on the site. Right, but without 
it, it doesn't specifically, it's, it's silent to where the material comes well, from, or if it's it limited like to be what's on site. I mean, it was a subsection of something else, and you're going to leave this open, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay, then I'll address that the next time. Okay. Because I want to look up the regulations and see. Because yeah, so, so it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't require you to bring material in and out of the site. It just says basically on the site. I don't believe it says on site. It just says well, out, it says, outside storage of raw materials. Yep. Work in process, finished process, process, machinery, waste material, and other equipment or material, including trucks used on premises. It doesn't say anything in and out of the site. Zero about that. So if you're holding on this regulation that you're going to be able to take stuff off the site, I don't think that you really could do that. That's why I want to do a little research on it. Because it just basically says specifically, right here, on premises. Well, I, I, I believe, again, I'd I would just look at it from the comma. It says including trucks used on premises. I would I would link that whole thing together, well, not state that on the on the premises would apply to all of the previous um, yeah, elements of that sentence. That. It doesn't say that. You know, this basically it all has to do with on site, from what I can see. I mean, we can start looking at that a little bit more detail. I don't know. Well, if, that's what uh, I'm saying. Because I think this a, is uh, like a. Yeah, I, th I think you have to you know, presume it, it's it's a regular interpretation. You're supposed to read it like it's normal language. Right. Well, but I'm saying is is this is all in in a second. This is like a second sub G. I mean, I want to read the beginning parts of it because I think this relates to if you had a construction yard or if you had this or you had that. I, I, mean, so, I, I, I appreciate the fact that, that you'll read it. I don't, I don't think it does. If you, if you read it, you'll see there's, there's permitted uses that don't require special permit and then there's special permit uses. But, but I think the intent was to allow this to happen if it was a construct, construction yard, I think, when this was put into the regulation. Historically, um, and I think you're absolutely correct, what reality is this is in this section of code, quite frankly, by an error from the part of the commission back in 2013. This actually was an accessory use that somehow got discombobulated in the, in the printing of the, of the 2013 overhaul. So in the context of what you're saying is that's what it was. It was an accessory to other permitted principal uses, be it as it may, this is what the law is today. Right, whether it's in the regulations by error or not, the, the, the property owner is entitled to look at the regulations, make right, a normal interpretation I, of them, and determine what, what they can do with their property. So No, no, I, and I have that, but I, I, it doesn't say that it could be that the material on this thing doesn't say that the material could be moved in and removed out of the site. It just says it could be processed on the site. Okay, why don't you um, take some time, yeah. look it yeah. over, and uh, you know, then maybe you can get Thank it you. Okay. clearer. Do you have any other questions? David? Um, just regarding the fleet vehicles, so if, if I understand correctly, we're looking at you're proposing three spaces unless there's fleet vehicles allowed, which would be how many then? Six. Six additional. Six additional. Okay. And then um, I was just curious um, from the photos, do you know how about how high the stockpile is now, approximately? Uh, I would say approximately 20 feet. And then how long, how high will it be once their bins are there? Like how high are they? So, so the site does, gr does uh, grade uh, in this direction. So down in this direction, you could have a pile of up to, there, there's, a, there's over a 30 foot grade separation between, um, There's a 30 foot of grade change between the road on Enterprise here and the, the elevation of the bottom of the bin. Um, so uh, it wouldn't be 30 feet, we'd probably be around 20 feet. And then as you continue this way, there's a little bit less of a, of a grade change. So those piles would shrink in height so that we're not gonna create something that you would be seeing from the road through the vegetation or above the vegetation. Great, okay. thank you. Okay. Um, just on the drainage, so hopefully, are you gonna, when you do pay the site, um, on the east side or the back of the lot, what is there going to be a curb there to keep the um, 
run off to down, to head down into the catch pit. From a grading standpoint, you can actually see here, we've kind of established a little bit of a, of a, of a channel or a, or a swale through here where this would be, which this would be the water would flow. Um, and, and now that we have the requirement to pave, we will be able to put a curb and it'll run along the gutter line. So you'll put a curb in there and then... And then there's a catch basin in this location here. We have to do the calculations to show that everything's going to drain right into those catch basins. We actually, um, our analysis was done to make sure it was conservative so that if we were required to pave, it, would. It, it, it was sized appropriately. So, so those calculations were completed. However, obviously there will be some revisions just to incorporate the paving and the uh, curbing. Also, um, do we have a detail on that curb? Uh, not yet. Can we get a detail on yes. that curb? Yes. Um, you're calling out no mow area along the street. No mow planting. And uh, I think in, in keeping with the, some of the other properties on or in this subdivision, you should be maintaining that area along the street, should be mowed regularly, not, you know, just left to grow wild. You know, and that, like I said, that should be part of a, a routine site maintenance plan, should be mowing the, the shoulders. Your landscaping plan, um, I understand that there's existing, there's an existing wooded buffer along the street line, but there, there's nothing here that indicates to me the density, the height, or anything. So, but you're proposing to put in a considerable amount of planting along the front line, but a lot of it is in 24 to 30 inch high understory plantings. You just have to make sure that what you're proposing is going to achieve the 12 foot high screen within five years. Because a, a 30 inch tall plant, maybe it's not intended to be 12 feet in five years, but you know, you have to have a, a solid 12 foot high buffer within five years. Right, and, and um, to that, you can see we, we tried to delineate in terms of where that existing edge is. You can see the, the 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 light area here. You know this is the bottom tree line edge. This is the top tree line edge. So what we were trying to do is is um, uh, supplement that and further enhance that rather than clear cut and replace. I understand, but I, right. I have no idea what the height or density of that is. Sure. I'm just making the statement that the regulations require a solid 12 foot high screen within five years. Okay. In fact, the regulations require the tree surveying as part of the plan requirements, and that would tell you what's there. You've already discussed the pavement for the parking and the storage, handicapped parking. Um, I'll just, since it's on my list, I'll bring it up again. My interpretation of 8.2.2E is that you need a toilet connected to some type of a sewage disposal system. Um, you said you have water on site for dust control. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Okay. Um, the stump area, you know, some of the other commissioners stated, you know, as long as it's, it's screened from view from the street, I, I don't see why you would have to move it from that area. You talked about the height for your storage. Are these, these bins are going to be built, is that correct? Yes, actually part of this is, um, you can see here, uh, in order to provide that 50 foot landscape buffer, the existing edge is gonna have to be pulled away and those bins established and a wall established and then the, that wall be backfilled to provide the uh, grading as, as required um, through here. So yes, th this this edge is is to be built, and then obviously the, the individual bins will also be built. So that is going to just by nature of what you can possibly put in those bins, it's going to limit your height, your storage height. 
Correct. Because if you did not have those bins, you could create a 20 or 30 foot high pile. You can't do that in those bins. Well, and that, it, it, you know, we did, have, we do have a very large bin here, right. trying to maximize that area to allow us to do that. And that is the most advantageous site on the property as that, that does have the greatest separation between Enterprise Drive and, and finished grade of the, the site itself. Um, yes, the, these bins, as you further as you continue over, will have. My concern is that we don't end up with a mountain that you're driving loaders up and piling it higher and higher. Um, your storage, your proposed storage, is within the bins. Is that correct? Yes. Not out in the center lot area. Correct. Uh, three to one slope. Does that meet our our regulations? Is that, is that compliant, a three to one slope? There's uh, those uh, regulations when you get close to the property line that may or may not be. Well, within 25 feet, but that's yeah, that, that but doesn't apply. Yeah, but aside from that, you're, you're two to one. Okay. So, yes. Um, will there be, I'm going to ask this again. It's been asked already, but will, will there be any crushing on site? No. Screening? No. Any material process? On no. Okay. Fuel storage? No. Are they going to fuel the equipment? Uh, they would bring in a fuel truck. Okay. And then uh, regarding a sign, at a minimum, we need the, the street number. And I believe for a commercial property, that's what, a minimum four inch letter? Yeah. You know, not 10. Got to, got to identify the property. Not yes. 10, four. Right, yes. <coughs> um, that's all I have right at the moment. Anything else from staff? The only other issue that I didn't raise in my comments, um, and this has come up a couple of days on another project in a similar situation, is that, yeah, we're asking, this is, applicant's asking for a special exception permit, and if that was granted, there typically is, you know, a time period in which to implement that and whatever. Um, but this is a little unique in the sense that, in a sense, this is also remediating what are uh, zoning violations and probably lawland violations as well. Um, and so, as a part of remediating those violations, I think a schedule of implementation, a specific schedule of implementation should be developed and proposed so that this doesn't, you know, go on further. We can turn to the work on that. Thank you all. Anything else, Will? Not for me. Scott? Uh, I'm all set. Mr. Soley, if you're all set for the time being, yeah. the commission's all set, nothing yeah. else? Okay. Let's uh, see if anyone from the floor has any comments. Is there anyone here who would like to speak uh, in favor of this application? You're, you're allowed to speak, Mr. Badera. You're a town resident. It's your property. No? Okay. Anyone who would like to speak in opposition to this application? Any general questions or comments? Okay, seeing none, Mr. Soley, back to you. Um, uh, you know, as, as I stated at the beginning of the, the presentation, um, since we did receive comments late, we didn't give the, inundate the commission with new additional plans or anything, so we will be, you know, taking the comments and the discussions we had this evening, making a revision to our application materials and resubmitting prior to the, the next hearing. And as always, we appreciate the, co the commission's consideration. So your intention is to have it in, like, by next Wednesday, so we'll be at the next meeting? Um, I think the next meeting is November, is it the, yeah, it would be that schedule. I think it's November second. Yeah. November second. Yeah. Yes. That's that's the intent. If if we need additional time, we will be getting that. But at this point, yes, we plan on having things in, in advance for the November second meeting. All right. We'll continue this to November second. Thank you. Thank you.